But yeah, yeah actually, so Yuji uh, was a big collector of vintage Beaumont and Marmesan toys, and when he decided to make his own toys, he wanted to have them have the same feel, the same flavor of the vintage toys, and so that's why some collectors even nowadays get a little confused. <laughs> they think they are vintage toys, so that's how accurate he got to that whole feel of the 60s and 70s. So. But what, um, I think, I think what, what, what drew me to this toy, and, and again, this was sort of my first, you know, sort of purchase or gateway into collecting vintage, vintage vinyl toys and the kaiju and that type of thing. You know, to me it really epitomizes everything that I, that I love about these toys. And, um, you know, this, this toy actually came out in 1991, and, you know, it's, it's just, it's hard to, it's hard to understand how difficult it was to even find these things. If I hadn't stumbled into this one shop, I just, I never would have been. If I hadn't stumbled into this one shop and this guy happened to go to Japan, you know, back and forth, I mean, I just, I never would have been exposed to this stuff, and frankly, financially, I'd be a lot better off, but, um, <laughs> what, 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 I, what I love about this toy is, again, it really epitomizes everything I love about, um, about Japanese vinyl. And on the one hand, you know, it, it's kind of goofy. It's like uh, you know a guy in a suit with, with a bug head, and, and it's supposed to be um, uh, you know or an alien head or, or whatever it is, and it's supposed to be um, uh, you know uh, 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 representing or reflecting you know uh, uh, or in the style of a child's plaything. On the other hand, there's something kind of menacing about it, and there's something kind of horrifying about it and nightmarish about it. I mean, to me, it's sort of Kafka-esque. Sort of you know, Samson Gregor woke up and discovered he was a cockroach. And it's it's like it's a it's like a salary man, but his head is is monstrous, and and there and there, there's this tension there, and 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 I, I think I think that's what makes these toys just work. You know, I come to this. I did not grow up with these TV shows. I was really attracted to the objects, and I then had to learn about the TV shows in order to find in order to be able to communicate with people and communicate with collectors and just describe what I wanted. So I just approach these in a different context. It's just. I'm just appreciating those objects. And it also kind of reflects sort of the, the meticulousness of, of detail. I mean, you know, he's wearing a tie, and his, his, his uh, suit pant legs are cuffed, and he's wearing wingtips. And, you know, it's just, there's something just crazy about it. And um, so, so this was, um, this was sort of my, my entry into this. And, um, you know, this is, this is a, you know, I'll just show you other examples of, I think all these toys, um, you know, all of these toys sort of reflect this, this, this tension somehow. That on the one hand, they're sort of goofy child play, you know, play things, but on the other hand, there's something sort of horrifying about them. I mean, this almost looks like, uh, you know, the, the, the creature from Alien, you know, where there's a monster literally growing out of a body. I mean, this doesn't look like a, like a pleasant state to be in. Um, you know, this, this is another, this is a, a monster from Spectre Man. And I actually remember seeing this, you know, back in 1991 and really kind of lusting after it. It took me, you know, probably 10 years to, to, actually, to actually, you know, find another one. Um, but, you know, the fact, somehow to me there's, there's this tension embodied in the, in the skull. Like it's in conflict somehow. There's something sort of nightmarish about it. Um, and so, um, you know, this tension is reflected In, in other ways. For, for example, one of the things that, um, you know, to try and put my finger on what's so intriguing about these is, of course, you know, these are supposed to be representations of monsters. But they're done in these crazy psychedelic colors. And you think about when this toy was produced in the 70s, I mean, what kind, what color clothes were people wearing? They were wearing, you know, earth tones and earth shoes and browns and that kind of thing. And here's this, like, psychedelic paint job. And, you know, in this country, when they produce a Wolfman toy, the universal mark, they don't paint them in psychedelic colors. So there's sort of this strange juxtaposition of a monster, but we're going to do it in these crazy colors. And so it, it kind of creates this, this tension, or this, 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 um, this thing that makes it more, more appealing and interesting as, as an object. Um, I, I think for sure the colorations also appeal to little kids. So if you just made something green or brown, that's not going to be as appealing as something that's bright red or Pink or violet, so. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the other thing that's, that's really interesting is um, uh, Yuji, the guy who, you know, pr uh, produces the, this toy, owns this company, M1. I, I've talked to people who have, um, you know, who have met him, and first of all, this, this guy, um, again, it's sort of like typically Japanese, is, is this guy, he, he works out of his apartment, 
Every one of these, and we'll get into, get into this one. He, he means Yuji works out of his apartment. Yeah, this <laughs> yeah. yeah Yuji works out of his apartment. <laughs> and, and, you know, every one of these toys is painted by hand. I mean, he sits there with a brush, and he paints you know, each eye by hand. He spray paints each one of these by hand. So each one is kind of a unique work of art. But somebody who had, who had met with um, Yuji had said, you know, you look at some of these toys, and you think the colors are just randomly slapped together. But there is really a thought about, about, putting, about putting these colors together. That, you know, some colors you can put together, and they clash in a way that's really appealing. And some colors you put together, and they clash in a way that, that just doesn't work. And so this looks like sort of haphazard randomness, but Yuji is very, very, has an incredible color sense, and very aware of what colors work and what colors don't. Yeah, for sure. He, he is a master. So these are just more examples of these vintage, you know, this is a, just a crazy one. And again, this, this sort of tension is a sort of animal with machine, you know, a helicopter on, on, the, on the top of his body. Um, again, again just, just taking these sort of opposing... But the thing to keep in mind is all of these toys, or most of them we're showing, are all toy versions of actual kaiju suits from live action shows or movies. So, um, you know, they, they really had a wild imagination that I think uh, Jim and I are just in awe of in terms of just the imagination, creativity, um, and yet the toys themselves are not always perfect replicas of what were in the episodes. And, and I, I think both of us agree that some of the best toys, kaiju toys, are the ones that actually don't look like the kaiju in real life. I mean, they've been sort of cutified, for lack of a better word. Uh, but you know, things are like shoulders are more rounded off, or the, the hands are chubbier. Um, but it's still it's still a monster. You know, they don't they don't go so far past that line that it's just this puff ball. <laughs> so. You know, here's just another example of sort of this you know uh, bringing sort of opposites together to kind of create this tension. Is it sort of a I guess a dinosaur, some type of animal with these you know you know saws um, embedded in it, and sort of you know machine and, and animal. Um, you know, here's just another really cool one called Big Eye. Um, actually, here are some vintage, vintage catalogs. So, you know, these are really just the attendants. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, when I first saw this image, it really was one of the images that inspired me to start my own toy company. Because at the time, my son was about this age. And I so wanted to replicate this photo. And just have <laughs> sleeping and, you know, all these kaiju around his head. Uh, which one? That. Uh, you know, I have the Bullmark reproduction box that they just put out, and there's like a full size um, poster, I think, that's in there. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's awesome. awesome. Uh, Bullmark uh, Bull is one of the manufacturers of these back in the 70s, and that's an you know, advertising piece. Yeah, I think, I think what's also just interesting to us is, um, you know, I, I guess sort of, you know, my impression of, um, uh, you know, uh, Japanese culture, at least at the time, is that, you know, it's somewhat conservative. And that I think there's a Japanese expression that you know the, the nail that stands up gets, or the nail that stands up gets, you know, knocked back down. And yet, when you look at these toys, I mean, it's just it's just imagination taking flight. Um, you know, what, what Mark and I were talking about this the other day, and what's interesting is I think with American toys, sort of like the child is expected to bring some imagination to the toy. I mean, a GI Joe or Star Wars toy. It's just it's very representational. It's it's you know 